Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the Round Table. Hi Noah. Um, <laughs> I have a, a standard poodle. He's a, he's a chocolate. He's kind of getting to be an old man, but he's quite happy. <laughs> he's like Tigger in Winnie the Pooh. Anyway, this week's um, sale name, I'm continuing on with my August sale and um, we did a lot of, we did, we had a theme of places to knit in the summer, then we had two weeks of a theme up around the Olympics and Ravelinics and all, and Hellenic Games and all of that, and I thought that since we're closing in on the end of August, um, we would do a week that was named for our love of raising the Angora goats. Of course, it's hot, and this is not, they don't mind the heat, but it's not their favorite. So I have behind me Louisa, who is sitting in the shade, and a couple that are over there by the hay feeder, which doesn't have much hay in it, but we just got a big hay delivery, so we'll have to put some in. Um, and so I thought I would name the yarn duos and trios on the theme of the goats. Okay, Jenny, let's walk over to the table. You can turn the camera around while I get up. <laughs> and we'll start talking about what I've got out to you. So um, I think I should probably, let me go oldest to newest. Okay, so then oldest is, again, all these sail duos and trios were based on the idea that I had only like a little bit left of a colorway and so I went around pat, uh, pulling them together. Um, sometimes I had two or three, sometimes I only had one. Um, I went digging through my, my whole inventory and found a couple more of some of the more popular ones from earlier this summer. Um, this one is called Ladies of the Swift Sword. This was one of the Olympic Games um, colorway uh, duos, which means they were 20 each, so this little package here is 40. Um, they're both speckled. This is speckled on, you know, a really, um, they're subtle colors, but active speckling. And this one is sort of monochromatic speckling. So there's one of those. Um, another one that was really popular was this one was named after the um gray dulce it doesn't have a gray plum dulce and young yes there we go <laughs> yes gray plum dulce and young and were were, were they basketball players they, i think that's women's basketball wasn't it yeah um, you know what if one of the people watching can correct me if i'm wrong but yes this was the week that we were celebrating women athletes not just everyone in the Olympics, but Olympic women. <laughs> so, and that one was really popular. Um, I will have to put its tag back in there. Um, oh, this was from the week before that. This was back in the first, last week of July, uh, a dip in the lake. So the theme on the sale theme here was, uh, oh, here, I'll let you zero in and close in shot. Um, the sale theme here was fun places to knit in the summertime and everyone goes for a dip in the lake if they can. And so um, that one was a dip in the lake. Oh, and you know what? I can't take too long today because my husband stayed home from work <laughs> and he's waiting for me to do this video and then the girls and I are all going to go to a local lake and we're going to go paddle boating if we can. Maybe canoeing, definitely not row boating. We did that last year and we all like, our arms were sore. <laughs> and so maybe we're, anyway, Jenny and I tried the paddle boat a couple weeks ago and we loved it. We had never done it before, right Jenny? Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, we loved it. We took, um, we put on big hats, lots of suntan lotion. We took a little snacks out with us on the boat. We thought we were gonna do some art, but we were so fulfilled by just boating around. We didn't even get to any art. <laughs> but 
But anyway, now we're going to take the family. Okay, so back to these, these older guys. This one is called Over the Moon Sail Duo. That was an earlier week too, very popular. I think, you know, the whole country went through a phase where they really liked this kind of dye work. And I guess it's still in. It's got a lot of like purposefully um, sort of ebby. You can see the color changes are gentle. Nothing is a hard color change. And this is not white. That's an off kind of uh, creamy, warm, creamy, uh, color right there next mixed in with the pink and everything but there is white in there oh here's a place where the creamy white meets well not exactly but on the skein meets a little of the regular white so there was I mean I did a whole series where I sort of starved the dye bath or starved the skein of yarn of too much color and too much saturation and so this is from that dye that dye work and that was kind of popular and then the last one that's an, um, a renewal of one that we sold out of was weaving by the windmill and oh my gosh I guess everybody loves this speckly one um, this is really intensely speckled throughout none of the you can see the little um, dabs of color they wouldn't be more than a stitch or so or something like that you know all, all over it um, there are some places where the color lasts longer but and then a very gentle uh, warm green to go um, with it and this is a, a semi solid I don't know if it looks solid on but it up close let's see if you can see did, was that there we go yeah and you know you can see that there are little variations of intensity of where it's more sort of um, misty and more minty and more sagey. So those are the renewals. So you have a question. Okay. Yeah. Um, is this wool yarn? I think you can. Oh, so yes, I can answer that question. So this is Superwash Merino. So Merino is a really, really nice soft wool and the Superwash um, the superwash uh, effect on this on on the merino makes it so that you can um, more than hand wash. You can put it in a washing machine. I mean, the label says that you can put it in a dryer too, and the superwash treatment is all about not shrinking or um, you know. Uh, it makes it so it's less likely to, to bias or pill, you know, that kind of thing. So people love the superwash because if you, like, knit for your new grandchild and, you know, you know that a baby is going to make something messy and you know a new mom is going to accidentally throw that cute hat into the washing machine, it'll be okay. <laughs> um, you know, of course, I lo always recommend that... Um, you know, if you let's say you were to make socks out of these with the superwash, I say to people, yeah, throw them in the washing machine. But when you put everything into the dryer, take your superwash socks and just put them on top of the dryer. The heat of the dryer will, by the time you go get your clothes out of the dryer, your socks on top of the dryer should be dry. To me, that's better care than throwing them in there. But the superwash yarn is supposed to be able to take that trip into the dryer. So there you go. And then one more thing. Okay. <laughs> um, what is the yardage per skein and the price? Okay, so I have to tell you. <laughs> the yardage, I feel like I'm, you know, in a small group of people who are pretty generous with their yardage on, on this particular kind of yarn. It's, a, it's fingering. I put um, 555 yards on a generally four ounce skein. So people, when they see more yardage, say, does that mean the actual strand is uh, thicker or thinner? No, I'm admitting to here, Jenny, here, do a close up of this. Let me take a little piece of paper and show somebody. This won't be, you know, too precise, but oh, here, let's see, one strand. Let me get it to one strand. Oh, can I do that online, live, live? <laughs> there we go, there's one strand. Ah, that's still two strands. There we go, one strand. So I know that that's not 
particularly scientific or precise, but um, my more yardage does not mean this yarn is thinner. I'm just saying that I like a fingering weight yarn to, I think so many patterns are written, the yardage of a different pattern is whatever it is. And people's stitch gauge, however they knit fast or slow is, or I mean, tight or loose is whatever it is. But, you know, if you look, if you search for patterns, most people search for them under 500 yards, over 500 yards, kind of multiples of chunks of 500. If they're not searching by, you know, like four ounces, eight ounces, a pound or something like that. Um, I am, you know, not the world's most, um, I don't know, I, I am not a knitting expert. I'm a yarn dyeing expert. <laughs> so I wanted my skeins. I know there's a ton of fingering yarn that comes at like 480 and that just drove me personally crazy. So I wanted them to be a little bit more like that. So I force 555. Um, on a four ounce skein. Um, I didn't answer all of that question. I went off and talked about one thing. What was the other part of the question? The yardage, oh, price. Yes. Okay, so these sales um, are really great because these have been selling normally for quite a few years, maybe five or something like that at, at 27 um, per stain. I am holding that price. We'll see what the world brings us after the end of the pandemic but for right now I can still offer that and so um, they're 27 each but the reason that these little I'm doing this video on these sale duos is that if you buy two I'm offering them 20 each if you buy three so that the duo would be $20 in the trios which I will show you in a minute they're $60 so I just it's a pretty good sale okay Next current topic was um, yesterday evening for one specific customer. I made a coupon just for her because, you know, people are special. <laughs> I, I love my customers and damn it, you know. Oh, I shouldn't have cursed on video. Um, sorry about that. But anyway, so <laughs> rolling right along, I made... Um, a coupon and then I thought well I guess I should share it today on the live stream so I'm sharing it it's create 0821 um, the specifics of the coupon I made it last for everyone else through the end of August it's good for 50% um, site-wide it does not overlap on the already sale thing so these are marked down so much that this doesn't go then on top of that but there's a ton of other stuff on the site. And then, but I did make it so that um, if you put more than $100 of, of things in your cart, um, you qualify for free shipping. And I made this coupon not touch that existing um, uh, free ship thing. Uh, thing. Oh, that's a really <laughs> specific thing. Yeah, my free shipping incentive. Um, there we go. Okay, so now my past up, um, the last through August sa summer sale, then the coupon, and now hooray, hooray for these new ones. So when we started, I was saying I was naming the little groupings after um, the goats. So this first one is called um, Passion for Angora Goats. And of course, you know, so aptly named because our pink is for the passion and this skein, which takes so much advantage of the natural white in the background. Um, Angora goats are traditionally white. I have colored Angora goats. Uh, so my Angora goats come in white, um, fawn, although the goat people don't call it that, they call it red black, gray patterns, you know, all kinds of things. So this was um, Passion for Angora Goats. And you know what? I have to tell you guys something. This is like a Casapinka colorway. So if any of you guys are into Casapinka patterns, this is a steal for you. 
and I gotta say, this looks a little more red on camera. It is a rosier, fuchsia. yeah, kind of. Um, yes, this one is fuchsia magenta. Fuchsia magenta. Yeah. Um, okay, and then normally I do not do the little sale things on onesies, but I needed to offer this one because every once in a while you make a dye lot where, um, what was it on Sesame Street? One of these skeins are not like the others. So all the rest of this dye lot came out not quite as dark as this one skein. So I just thought, oh, I'll put him up there. This is not fingering weight. Um, Our Heart Belongs to Luna is the name of this little sale guy all by himself, a little sale single. Um, Luna was our guard llama. Um, and, um, Luna is the name of the night, so, you know, for the moon. And so since this has little tiny flecks of white with lots and lots of deeper sort of um, mulberry and turquoise and kind of, um, you know, violet is in there. So that's, that's this one. Um, moving right along to a duo. Oh, I love this duo. I had some customers come in and buy this skein this past week. Some more of these. This one is called Joyful Pasture because, oh my gosh, the goats are always happy out in the pasture. Playing, eating, it is their place. Although, in the heat of the day, since it's noon here on the East Coast, they kind of duck into the barn for a little while and sit in the breezeway. Oh, did I do that? Or is that just where I tied it? Oh. I think that's where you tied it. Okay. I, I hate that when I pull a strand. I'll have to take that one out and redo it. But this green was this green, so I connected them together. And you know, there's lots, there's pink, there's again with the magenta, some sort of very, very pale lemony yellow, light pink, little violets, a little, few little specks tangerine. It's a nice happy uh, color combo. And then the last duo is um, Loving Goaty Girls. Oh my goodness. I used to tell my children to not get attached to the um, baby goats that were boys because they couldn't stay. So we have we totally let our hearts go to the goatee girls because they generally all stay. And so this has, I took a sort of soft creamy peach and married it up to um, a randomly variegated skein with some light speckling that's in some, you could call these, um, you know, fall colors, but I would say it's a summery version of fall colors. <laughs> How do you like that for oxymoronic? But you know, there is some gold and some bronze, uh, so not even bronze, just a little bit of antique gold. And then a little mauve and some apricot and some pink, some very pale peach. So that's a nice color combo. Okay, and now the two trios. So when we were asking about Normally this would be 27 times 3, and now it's 20 times 3. Um, so this one was called Goaties Love the Hay Wagon. And I just sort of want it, you know, around this time of year, it's harvest time, I start to get in the mood for this kind of color. Maybe I should move these all into the sun. Wow, where, where's the best? Is the shade affecting that? Um. Really? No, a little. Okay. There yeah. we go. Thanks, yeah. Jenny. So this is basically a solid, semi-solid, the, the, the very brassy gold color. Um, and then there's a good bit of that same brassy um, nature in this um, randomly um, variegated and speckled skein. And then this... Um, the red that picks up on the darker, deeper tones of um, red in the middle one are on this side in this um, 
more randomly variegated, tonally dyed. I would call this tonal dye work, meaning I did not stray out of this dark red, sort of blood red color palette, but these are different tones of that very same um, palette. You know, okay, and that's this, that's um, Goaties Love the Hay Wagon. And then my last trio um, for today is Angora's Grays at Dusk. And, you know, I was just saying they kind of go in in the middle of the day in this heat. Um, and then I, I, I guess that was apropos because because they do come out in and dusk and graze. Um, so this middle one is, oh my gosh, that is so highly speckled. Oh my goodness, speckle, speckle, speckle. And I was really brave with my um, color choices. I included a lot in there. So you could match this one a number of different ways, but since the underlying thematic uh, background color was a neutral. I wanted to give you a neutral to work with in kind of like a typical shawl trio, you know, that you would need for shawl knitting. Um, and then it's so um, comfortable that if you're going crazy here that you work with um, a very easy on the eye sort of tealy um, periwinkle this is kind of teal and periwinkle in here. And both of these colors are part of the speckles in the, um, in the central uh, one. So a semi-solid, again with, I would call this, um, it's a, this for being tonally dyed is very actively tonally dyed. It's, it's um, these, you, you know, the color transitions are really um, soft not necessarily long but soft and they kind of go from teal to periwinkle and again both of those shades are in here so sort of variegated very speckly and a semi-solid um are there any more questions um oh real quick what would you recommend for socks oh i love this stuff for socks um actually depending on the thickness of your sock you could I mean people knit a lot of I mean oh my goodness there's a lot of folks that have even dropped calling this particular kind of yarn fingering weight yarn and they're going towards calling it um, sock weight yarn all the time um, because it's weird your social media posts sometimes get snagged if you call this fingering weight yarn I guess because there's evil people in the world so a lot of times online, this is just referred to as sock weight because of how common it is to knit the socks. Um, but if you are in a northern climate and you wanted some super wash in a heavier weight, like let's say sport or even decay, um, I have Pendragon in five different weights of yarn. And that one onesie uh, that I had, oh, this guy, this is the DK. So why don't I, let me show this against something. What's, okay, here, uh, I don't know, here we go. Do a close up of the DK next to the strands from the um, fingering, from the fingering sock. And that will show you a little bit of the difference of the thickness of yarn. So this is DK and this is the sock weight. Um, so that, you could, you know, no rules against um, knitting socks with a slightly heavier yarn, but, um, you know, they will be really, really warm. Here, I'm sorry, I was looking down instead of looking at you guys. <laughs> um, oh, was I talking too softly? Oh, yes. <laughs> a little bit, Jenny. Jenny is saying, okay, was there anything that I should repeat? Um, no, maybe, okay. Just the, the first bit, I guess. <laughs> okay. Just to make the point that you could absolutely use a heavier weight yarn than sock weight or fingering weight to knit socks with. Um, uh, but 
you would probably use them in a colder time of year or a colder climate. <laughs> um, and of course, if you use a heavier weight yarn, you'll go through a little bit more. Like this would not do knee socks on both legs. You know, you would want more like something, a shorter sock. Um, so I guess that that is uh, everything I can think of, unless there's anything you can think of, Jenny. No, I think, I think we're all good. We think we're all good. You know what? I should say this to everyone watching the video. If I um, uh, have, you may communicate with me through the Facebook Messenger. Um, I'm also on Instagram through Instagram. Um, you can go to the website and use the contact button. Um, and I think two other places where I'm, I am I will post this video up to YouTube after today. And I suppose I should tell you guys, if a few of you like Tumblr, I have recently opened a Tumblr. I'm kind of new to that, but it's a nice format. So I'm even on there. So that's a lot of different places where you can shoot me a quick question. And I keep, you know, I might not look at all of those places in one day, but I, I keep cycling through. <laughs> I suppose if you need to get me that day, the best is through the email on the website. If it's a like, oh, Karen, answer this today, um, do, the, do the website. So there's a way to ask me any further questions. Thank you guys for coming. See you next Thursday.